Hello again. In our last encounter, a dire conflict had been unleashed. The Carthaginian hordes advanced upon our fair republic. With eight of our noble allies, our brethren in arms, we stood against the Carthaginian tide. Our shields defied the influence of their foul elephant gods. Unfortunately, that was not to last. The king of our Iberian allies died without leaving an heir, plunging the north of Iberia into chaos as petty tribes fight for its throne. Carthage, seizing upon this chaos, invaded the fractured north, forcing us to intervene, to unite Iberian tribes under our banner. Alas, our actions of intervention, though noble, have alienated our Gallic allies, causing them to withdraw from the struggle in Iberia. Now we, Massilia, stand alone against the vast might of the Carthaginian elephant. Yet, we shall not falter. We shall stand resolute, our shields held firm against the tusk of Carthage. In this trial of strength, only one of us shall meet Elysium. Welcome back to our mega campaign of the Massilian Republic. I hope you enjoyed the cinematic intro and if you like this type of video feel free to like and subscribe. Between the last video and as our intro set, our Fardunian allies collapsed and we rushed in there to ensure that Carthage could not take the land. It seems that we, with the Beturians in blue here, are the last democratic countries in the world. For what democratic meant in ancient times, of course. Oh wait, uh... Yeah, uh, the Greeks here are still doing their thing. Wait, <laughs> wait, what? Is Sparta is democratic and Athens is a monarchy? <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> we, we are truly having alternative history right here. In our last war with Carthage, we won, but it took a long time. Our Massilian troops are high-tech heavy infantry with a big punch that work well against the Carthaginian swarps in the north of Iberia, where the numbers count for nothing. But now further south, the hordes of Carthage outflank us with the large border. To solve this uh, border problem, I made the military plan that I showed in one of my streams. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Sorry for the silly face reveal. You can see the plan or the latest part of the main campaign down in the description. To tell the plan in short, it's a mad dash to the Strait of Gibraltar, or how they called it back in the day, the Pillars of Hercules, to block off any Carthaginian reinforcements and then take the rest up into Iberia. We start the war and we rush down. We did have a minor defeat in the east coast, but luckily our main army still reached the Pillars of Hercules. Once we secured the pillars, we sent a small group up north to take all the forts between the main army and the border, so if anything bad would happen, we would have a way to retreat. To the east we sent a way larger army to take all the coastal forts and stop any naval reinforcement. The plan seems to work. Every time the Carthaginians try to cross the strait they get utterly crushed by our armies. You can see here we have defeated more than 100k troops than they have from us. Sadly we have to end the war because of the game mechanics. We, we would have like continued this war and taken more land but yet the game doesn't allow it so eh. In the peace treaty we take all of the east coast of Iberia until the Pillars of Hercules and change it into a fortress cell making it impossible for Carthage to win the next war. This frees up our army and we can start a new military operation just as the Romans did in our timeline we are going to reward our veterans and give them free land which will boost our recruitable and more importantly our taxable population which uh, we also desperately need to survive any Roman incursion into our lands. The one downside of this free land is that it has people living on it and they don't like it when their ancestral land is given away and they start rebelling. Never take so we use the freed up armies from the Carthaginian conflict to suppress, um, I mean, uh, to pacify all the non-taxpayers. Well, I was not knowing that the pacification operation would have unintended consequences that would lead to the largest historical loss until now for Massilia. The Stonine tribes just uh, as the Fardulians collapsed and to make sure the Romans wouldn't move north, we declared war against the new tribes. The first war was easy, but the second war was against the Stonine colony in Iberia of just two small provinces. Not thinking much of it, I only had like a small army ready to fight them. The rest were still dealing with the non-taxpayers. Only when I was ferrying over an army from Britannia to deal with a Gallic revolt, I saw a Victorian army crossing the border. And I was quite confused because uh, they were at war with me for some reason. So I looked, are the Victorians like supporting a revolt? They were not. 
So I looked at the Estonian war in uh, Iberia. For some reason, the war leader had become the former Estonian uh, tribe in the Alps. And as a World War One network, they had called in the Biturian allies. This is really bad. We had no forts to protect our large border with the Biturians. We had deemed it way too costly to protect the large border. We had opted to keep the Biturians happy with money and deter them with our large army. But now our armies are busy putting out rebellions. Even some of the troops that came from Britannia, we have to send back to fight some upcoming Caledonian rebels. So we bought some mercenary armies, but those were quickly crushed by the better prepared Biturians. Trying to regroup the armies, we suddenly got a message from a fort that fell a few provinces away from Massilia. Now seeing a 12k army bearing down on our capital, we were only able to get an army of 12k, barely making parity with the enemy to protect the capital. The battle near Massilia was tense. Luckily, with the help of the gods maybe, we just won the battle. Shortly after that, our main armies were freed up from fighting the rebels and joined the front line. The war still took a long time because of the large open border. Over time, we did push the Baturians back. And in the peace treaty, we took small borderlands from the Baturians that had forts. We did not have really the money to buy more forts, so this was a like win-win. But did we really win the war? Because at the end, the, uh, what did the war really cost? The Baturians had burned and pillaged our heartland, destroying decades of hard population growth and putting us further back than at the start of the Operation Pacification. To recuperate our losses, we gave our former enemy in Iberia, the Punic Carthaginians, uh, the citizen rights. Then we uh, conquered the last Carthaginian holds in Iberia and we opted to take the Estonian lands in the Alps with an army this time prepared to deal with the Biturians. The Romans were still too large to deal with, with more tech, with more armies. If we could not defeat the Romans in open battle, we needed to change the future conflict in a way where we could pick where and how to strike against the Romans. To do this, we changed the Exestonian Alps into a bulwark, building forts on every checkpoint to block off the Roman advance and building roads in every corner to speed up our troop movement we supplied the cities with more food that was native to the Alps, so we could fuel and supply larger armies than Hannibal ever could dream of. And after the do um, toll work, after the bull work was done, an opportunity uh, opened itself. The Romans entered a war with Ptolemaic Egypt, and we saw Roman troops land in uh, Anatolia. We bought mercenaries. We kept our armies with troops. Uh, sadly, this put our economy in red. So we decide to destroy our forts in Iberia and Bituria, opening up a chance for our former enemies to destroy us. But we had to defeat the Romans. The Romans were the only real threat. And like this virtual dude said, fortune favors the bold. So we declared war and we crossed the border. We took the first fort so fast that the Roman legion behind that fort wasn't ready for our armies raining down on them. They had to retreat, leaving the whole front open, and our armies just marched there, took all the other forts unopposed, digged in, and were ready for any Roman reinforcements. It seems that at least some Roman armies are stuck in Anatolia. The Romans in Italian still tried to do a counterattack, but we repelled that counterattack, and then start moving further into Italia. There is a Roman army who tries to go for a fort in the Alp, but far away from the war goal, so... I guess good for them, <laughs> it's, not, it's not gonna do anything for them. And the Egyptians win the war, and they take for some reason land in Illyria, uh, I guess, fine? Why so far away? Uh... So now the war with the Egyptians is over, so we rush down the last forts and wait before the main Roman army arrives from the Egyptian front. We see the first real Roman legions arrive, they look scary, there are a lot of them. We should end the war, but we can hold them off for a little bit more, and we rem remembered what the Biturians did to us, to our population, and the whole of Italy is undefended. So I'm sending down a couple of legions to... Uh, commit uh, some war crimes and pillaging to reduce the recruitable population for a future conflict. After the war crimes, uh, we signed the peace treaty, but it isn't over because now the real war starts because we have no longer the bulwark to defend us. So we quickly built lots of forts in the Italian uh, 
base, and I don't know how it is called, something here is the name. We also, in the meantime, discover the number zero, and probably that means we have calculus, so be that Archimedes with your silly bad water and circles. We declare other war against the Romans, where we try to take uh, the opening into Italia, cutting off Rome from all the reinforcements from their empire. This one goes so easy, because you know, we cut off the Romans, and we almost reach Rome. It's almost there. We almost have finished the job, but just right before that, the war score doesn't allow us to conquer a little bit more. It was a dream that was Rome. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. But we still are able to take that little bit of chunk, and we repeat what we did against the Carthaginians at the Pillars of Hercules, and we fortify this last chunk. Uh, of land here, where the Romans have to fight the hard war. In the meantime, after this war, some strange cult appears in the east, uh, called Christians, Christians, I don't know, Christus, whatever, uh, what, what their name can be. So we wait, we look at the wounded wolf, and then, after a truce is done, we go in for the kill. As soon as our troops cross the border, the big battle for Rome begins. We win the battle and then we start the siege of Rome. It will take a long time before we can actually get past the big Roman walls. So we send the rest of our troops further south to take more Roman land, get more war score. Just like in the last war, the Romans are divided. A group tries to attack the north and a group is in the south of Italy. It makes it considerably more easy to win the war. He, like history will repeat it with the Carthaginians. The Romans try to do one more desperate trick to save their glorious city or whatever, and they do a naval invasion. But a guy named Leonidas stops the Roman invasion and saves the Hellenic world from the tyrannical Romans. Shortly after, our invasion succeeds, and as proved by the gods that Massilia is set for a great fate on the Sunday, the 13th of January, 54 AD, Massilia conquers the Eternal City. A month later, Rome signs the Peace Treaty, and this will be the first year in the Massilian calendar. For the old people of Ionia, who founded Massilia, they fled from the Persians for freedom and believed peace could be won by diplomatic ways, but they were wrong. As it is shown here, Massilia has changed to survive for its peace. It fought off, it won, and now nobody can st uh, stop them because Rome has fallen. Nobody can finish off Massilia. Hi, it's the fish person. You've reached the end of the video. I hope you liked that video. Uh, you can always subscribe. And if you don't subscribe, this is what the viewer said. <laughs> that he will, <laughs> he will hunt you down. But it's, it's not a threat made by me. But it's also a joke, so don't take it too serious, all right? It, 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 there's no real hunting down of, of you <laughs> all right the also the viewer said right to the ratio of the video of the last video and the subscribers that we got that uh, that people really liked the mega campaign so i can tell you definitely more is coming i also stream the content because it might take a while because life is a little bit in the way but if you don't like the streams you don't need to put on the bell notification you can just put subscribe and probably will get a notification if i do a mega campaign video because the youtube algorithm will know okay you see this this person likes a uh, mayor campaign. So here it is. Here is the, the video. And for the other little more point here is because I did promise in the in one of my streams to two people who were watching the stream that I would hide a product key of Imperator Rome in the video. So here's the hint. And here is a translation. Somewhere in the video, there are hidden things you can translate. And maybe if, if it doesn't work, I will put uh, in the other video another hint. And if people then can find the video, I mean, if people then can find the key, you can always drop it in the comments so other people know you found the key. But you could be lying too. You could be saying like, oh, I found the key. So I only can know if somebody actually writes down the key in the comments that the key has been found. Could be lying. You could be like mean about it. So hopefully you are not. Hope you enjoyed the video and bye-bye. Uh,